let's see. Let's see how, how tricky this one is. So we have a triangle ABC. Um, M is the midpoint of BC and N is the midpoint of arc BAC. I know that's not written that great. N mid arc BAC, but you know what that means. Um, and we draw the X centers of BAM and CAM. I don't know if we've done this problem before. It looks maybe a tiny bit familiar, um, but I don't know. So we have the midpoint of arc BAC. Um, so this is M and this is N. And then we have the X centers of BAM and C. Uh, so let me draw a bunch of rays here. Uh, what am I doing? There we go. So yeah, I don't know a great way to draw. Um, and I don't know a great way to draw. There is a nice way to draw the X center. How do you do that? Do you remember? I've told you. Yeah, before. you told me at once. Uh, the, the, oh, oh, the angle bisectors. So it's like, um, like you, you, you click the, the line. Is it like this? Yeah, yeah, like that. Okay. And this and this okay so i think it's this point yeah this point and this point um so this is i2 and this is i1 and it's saying that those four points are cyclic That's interesting. Okay. Um, so let me hide a bunch of stuff. Hide, hide. And yeah, we don't need that or this. Um, so let me draw the X circles, just if that happens to help. Okay. There we go. So D and E will be the points of tangency. And we could draw the other ones later if we want. But this is the problem. Okay. Obviously, MN and O are collinear. I don't know if it's worth drawing like the in centers of AMB and ACM. I kind of wonder what, what, what the common tangents of these circles are. I don't think it'll be very helpful, but you know, BC is a common tangent. And then there's another common tangent here. Um, and then, and then if we drew that, then I1 and I2 would lie on, would be collinear with this intersection point. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that would be helpful, so I'm not going to draw it for now. But yeah, I wonder if there's some other point that lies on this circle. 
or like a special point. Um, maybe maybe this point that where it meets the median. Um, Can you check the uh, angle I1 and M equals to I2 and NC? Okay. Um, so. I2 and. I2. I2 and M. Okay. No, first one was true. The second one was I2 and M. First one is I2 and C. Second one is I2, uh, I1 and M. Oh, okay. I1 and M. Yes, they do equal. If we prove it, we are done because uh, it's, a, uh, it's equivalent to I1 and I2 is uh, A over 2. Okay. And we know that I1, A, I2 is A over 2. All right. So we have this and this. So it's kind of like you're saying a spiral similar. Is it, would these no, finals be? Not, uh, no, they're not sim uh, similar. Okay, they're not similar. So maybe the isogonal line lemma or something. Yeah, the isogonal line lemma looks like it might be interesting because B, C, and I, I2, I1, I2 would intersect at the X and millicenter of these. And then I1, M, and I2, C, um, those would be like the angle bisectors of this and this. Okay. Gonna line them up, we should intersect I1C with I2M, not I1M with I2C. Okay, so like this? Yeah. But then what would the other intersection be? It's the X in the center, other one. Oh, the X in the center. Okay. Hmm, it doesn't seem true. Uh, I guess what you said was true. Yeah, so so like, yeah, where those intersect. Oh, it's only 10.07 in my country. All right. Um, maybe the power ratio lemma would help. Let's see.
I'm not sure. Uh, I don't think II2 is, no. So I wonder if there's anything like special about this point right here. Um, Let me draw the center of ABC. It's going to lie on MN. Call it O. So yeah, if these are isogonal, then that means, yeah, like let's draw the midpoint of arc um, BC. I think that might help. And if we draw this point and this point, then we want to show those arcs are equal. No, that's too much. I'm just curious. Let me see if I draw I1M and I2C. Oops. To see, and then yeah, I'm not going to do that. I think. Let's see if we can find another point on this circle and something special about. Like if we intersect it with this, with AM, um, is there anything special about that point? Um, so we know, we know this is cyclic. We know this is cyclic. Okay. 
and draw that back in. Maybe if we let this intersect it again, there's something special about that point. Uh, intersect i1 m and i2 e uh yes yeah. so i1 m and i2 e yeah okay uh i wanted to see if they intersect on circle but they don't okay so i1 d is parallel to i2 e i don't know if that will help Maybe we could let those meet the circle or something. Because yeah, yeah, this angle is equal to this angle. And we want to show it's this angle. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I wonder if um, we, any way we can use medians and semedians. Um, so M is a midpoint of BC. If one of these is a, can we show one is a median and the other is a semedian? Okay, so yeah, we want a line that passes through M where hmm, would be G. Or we could try to make this one a medium. That's my favorite way of showing things are isogonal. One is a medium, the other is a medium. 
um, but it doesn't look that easy here. Let's see. Um, Ray. I don't think I2C is tangent, right? Oh, wait, is I2C just tangent to the circle? Yeah, right? because this is 90 degrees, because we have an angle, yeah. No, it's not 90 degrees. Oh, you're right, this isn't the end center, yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, how do we use that I1 and I2 are X centers? Uh, let's see, let's check the chat. And I also draw the MX centers of MAB and MAC, yes. Uh oh, I'm going to use a trick that Stefan mentioned. So we have this and this are already there. And this and this it should be. Uh, I'm going to draw the whole line now. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to hide a couple things in the end, but for now, let's uh, see if I can see that other point. It's kind of high up there. There we go. Like that. Shrink it just a tiny bit. Okay, so. These are the X centers of, of uh, MAB and MAC. And let's draw the X circles. That should be one of the X circles. And then that would be the other one. Are they are they uh, tangent? I think they are. Um, and I think that that might be true by a length chase, but it looks like they're right. They're tangent at this point. But K should be a gray point out that uh, maybe it doesn't oh they're not tangent never mind 
just looked like it. Wait, that doesn't look right. So, something's wrong here. Yeah. Oh, because this, I didn't draw this one right. That's why. Because this one shouldn't go through point I, it should go through this point. Okay. So, yeah. So once I draw it like that, I think they're tangent. But it's still hard to tell. Yeah, they should be. GeoGebra just doesn't doesn't know their tangent, so it makes it a blue point instead of a, a black point. Um, they're not tangent. Oh, they're not. Yeah, that would be true only if uh, ABC is isosceles. Okay. Interesting. It's very, 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 they're very, very close then. So, oh yeah, if I go like this, then you can start to see that they're not. So, yeah, because you have this point all the way out there, and then you have that point. They're clearly different. All right. The AX center of ABC. Okay. This is a, a messy diagram, but I'm going to keep keep doing it. Um, So yeah, that and that would probably be useful because that's just this point right here. And then we'd have like a triangle where we'd have these are collinear, these are collinear, but we don't have a collinear either. Oh, actually we still want to leave those because yeah, we want to show them. Okay. The intersection of M, I1, I2, let's see. With BC is the foot of the perpendicular from P to BC. That's interesting. Um, Could it be some isogonal conjugate kind of kind of a yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. So we have PQ. Because yeah, that looks like it would be like a well-known fact if that were true, right? You have that. Well, not necessarily a well-known fact, but Do we have like a nine point circle or something? So is CI1 and BI2? Uh, I don't think so. Do 
A has an isogonal conjugate. So, th so this, the isogonal conjugate of A is Q in uh, triangle PGH or something? In triangle PGH? In, oh, and in, oh, in the quadrilateral, G, I, 1, I, 2, H. Interesting. It's a lot of stuff here. So angle H, G, A is angle. Okay. So we have H, G, A, whoops. I have to remember counterclockwise, always counterclockwise. Um, then, G, M, and I, too. Uh, why is that true? Is that obvious? Oh, yeah, it's obvious because, yeah, and they're angle, yeah, okay. Wow, a lot, a lot going on here. Yeah, I, I could, I, I feel almost sure that we solved this problem before, but I just forgot how we did it. I get a couple snacks for myself. I'll be right back. So wait, I wonder, this almost looks cyclic. Um, it's not. G A. Interesting. So those are just the two X centers. Is that just like an angle chase? Okay. Mm -hmm.
The center of the circle is a midpoint of I1, I2. Okay. That makes sense. All right, see you next time, Simon. Have a good day. So we have to use somewhere that M is the midpoint of BC, right? They intersect NF with GP. Okay, NF with uh, GP, so right here. Yeah. Is F midpoint of MS? Now uh, let's see. No, no, it cannot be. It's not symmetric. Okay. Okay. I feel like I'm learning a lot about this configuration from everything that Khan has showed. But yeah, I'm just still not sure how to use that M as the midpoint of BC. Um, let me... Yeah, we'll just, we know that H is up there. I wonder if when I did this before, when we saw this before, like I defined this point. Um, yeah, I wonder if there's something special about this point right here, T. Um, no. So yeah, we have a lot of isogonal conjugates. Um, but can we use it to show that these are isogonal? Can we show that M and I2 are, are isogonal conjugates in some triangle?
16. This looks bigger than that. Um, I wonder if it's worth trying to end the circles here. Yeah, it's only 1040. Yeah, let's work on this for like another 20 minutes. And then if we still get stuck, we can move on. That'll give us a good amount of time. I'm going I'm to delete point S just for now. Yeah, there's too much, too much in this diagram. If we prove that GN by 2S is cyclic, then we are done. That's why I make it. Oh, GN. If we can prove that GN over over what? Uh, GN I2S is cyclic. Then we are done. Okay. Uh, well, it's not. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe. It's yeah, good to see it because I was trying to prove it. Ah, uh, all right. Yeah, I'd like to, let's see, I1, M, N. I don't think K lies on that circle, right? No. What if I drew like this point? Let me want to show that stick like. Um. Okay, let me erase what I just did there. Uh, since I one M. I2 is 90. Um, okay, so M and N look like they're isomal conjugates. That looks like it could probably be pretty useful. Um, let's see. So counterclockwise. A lot of good isogonal conjugate stuff. So M and N are isogonal conjugates in this big triangle. All right. Uh, 
So angle I one P M is angle I two P N. Let's check that. What? I thought I did it counterclockwise, so it would, uh, I don't know. So PM is a median. So PN would be a semi-median of triangle PBC. Um, so let's see, what would that mean? So that means N, N, uh, N, B, and N, C are tangent. Oh, yeah. So basically, if we draw this circle, then we're saying N, B, and N, C are tangent. Yeah. The center of the circle. Whoops. S. Wait, is F the center of? Is F the circumcenter of PBC? Maybe that's obvious. I don't know. If we can show M and N are isogonal conjugates, we're done. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, I wonder if F is the center of this circle right here. Looks like it. Is that obvious? So it might be obvious. Since NB and NC are, I saw are tangents, PN is a median. But 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 do you know that they're tangent? I, I kind of work the the other way. Is it is that an angle chase to show that they're tangent? No, it's like you can prove it uh, since like this angle. Uh, BPC is a fixed angle right, due to that external bisector thing and NBC is also a fixed angle. You can calculate that in terms of EBC. Okay. Oh yeah, it's just in center, X center. Yeah, okay. So, so PN is a median and PM is a median. So we know that those are isogonal. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Yash. Um, is 
So yeah, we know they're isogonal with respect to this angle. We just have to show that it's true for one of these two angles. Okay. Uh, let's see, can we use something similar yeah, it's going to be a little tricky. I was going to say maybe use some medians somehow to show. Like if we look at triangle GBC, maybe. So uh, GF. Uh, uh, is there an Of course, we can see. Uh, I cannot see the top point. GAN and the other one. Oh, H. Sorry. Yeah, GANH. Hmm, actually, I couldn't prove it, sorry. Okay. I wonder if those are cyclic. <laughs> yeah, they are. I thought I proved it, but I didn't. If you can prove these are cyclic, does that solve it? Okay. And that almost feels like it should be, is, is that only true when M is the midpoint of BC or is that just a general fact, A and G and H are cyclic? Because, yeah, we can calculate angle GAH somewhat easily, um, but GNH is a little harder. That is interesting. G A N H. 
That's what we want to show. Is there another special point that lies on that? So yeah, we could hide just the whole bunch of stuff and then try to prove GANH is cyclic. Um, and GH is perpendicular to AN. Oh, no, not necessarily. Actually, I don't think it ever is. Um, so what are we trying to show? Are we trying to show that MMN are isogonal conjugates in that quadrilateral, right? Uh, yeah, in this triangle, PGH. Okay. And that's equivalent to showing that GANH is cyclic. Let's see. A is the spiral center taking G I one to I two H. Interesting. Okay. Uh, 
Um, so that might make it, let's see. Well, yeah, it, it has to be because A is the intersection of the circumcircles of G, M, I, 1, and H, M, I, 2, right? So, yeah. Which is, yeah, basically an angle chase. So, um, so angle A, G, H is P, G, H minus A, G, I, 1, which is P, G, H minus A, uh, I two H All right, it's 11. Uh, you guys want to keep working on this one or you want to try something new? Something new. Would be okay. Good. Yeah, I agree. It's been a while. Uh, okay, this one's the fun solid four. Um, this one. Yeah, let's try this one. So. Uh, we have a triangle ABC and AD is the angle bisector. And then we draw the perpendicular bisector of AB. Okay, so these are the circles with diameters AB and AC. So all right. Um, it's like VJ is joining. Uh, let's draw that. And we want the circles with diameters. Uh, thanks for joining VJ. So I'm gonna call this M and N. And draw those circles. And so th these will be points E and F. And B, E, um, did I do that right? It meets A, B at E and A, C at F. And B, E meets A, C at L and B, F. That's interesting. I thought that like you could see, like I thought it was like these two points, but I guess not. Um, so yeah, let me draw these as rays instead of lines. I want to see where DE, DF meet AC and AB, and then we want to show that all those points are cyclic. So DE meets AC at L, and A, B at K, D, F meets A, B at K. And we want to show that these are cyclic. Let's check it. Oops. So yeah, by symmetry, we only need to show that one of them lies on it. So I could just hide point L. Um, I'll hide it instead. So yeah, we want to show A, E, K, F is cyclic. Let's draw the midpoint of A, B. So that we know it's, we can see it's a perpendicular bisector.
Oh yeah, we don't really need. Well, M, N, and G are collinear. That's significant. So let me see if it's worth drawing this. What about this? Because okay. this, whenever I have a perpendicular bisector of an angle bisector, um, then that would mean if I drew this angle. Yeah, I'll keep thinking about that a little bit. So we're going to show AKF equals angle AEF. And yeah, these obviously concur at the foot of the altitude. They, have, they just happen to call it H, which makes things easy. <laughs> So yeah, what I was thinking is we have to use the angle bisector somehow. Um, I draw this and I draw these two points. Yeah, I don't think that'll do too much. Well, let me think about this.
So let's see, angle, we want to show angle EAK is EFK, but EAK is EAB. And which is EHB. Yeah, maybe there's some similar trials here. So EFB is GFD, which is GFA. So we want to show EF, I think. We want to show that EAI is similar to EFA, EAF. I think that's what we want to show. We show BEA is similar to FGD. We're done. Yes. which is the same as BEA is similar to FGA. That's EAI. We need AHE is AHF. That's interesting. Uh, I don't think that's true. Okay. Yeah, if we could show EAI is similar to EFA, that would solve it. And
going to use power of point somehow. So yeah, we want to show EA's tangent to this circle. Um, It looks like Sardar had to hop off. Um, yeah, this seems like it should be doable, right? Let's see. I want to show ABE is similar to AFG. Um, yeah, what if we did this? So I think if we let these intersect at a point, I think it's equivalent to showing that this is cyclic, BDJK. Yeah. So. Yeah, if we could show BDJK as cyclic, that would solve it. And maybe we could use power of a point. Um, that's also the same as showing that M MGJK is cyclic. H is the foot of the altitude. So if this were cyclic, this would also be cyclic.
we could do it the other way. We could, um, this AB is an angle bisector. So what we could do, we could let We could try to show that F, D, and K are collinear. And do it like that. So if we do it that way, we want to show Basically, we want to show Fi is the angle bisector of AFK. Oh, is, is AEFK cyclic? Oh, that's what we're trying to show. Yeah. So wait, if it is cyclic, then this would be an angle. So then EA would equal EK. Interesting. Is that obvious that EA equals EK in this diagram? is EA equals EB. So that would mean E would be the circumcenter of ADK. Yes, let's see if that's obvious. So yeah, maybe we should define it like that. And then F. So we could let K prime be, we could draw this circle. And we could let it intersect AB at K prime. And then we could show that this is cyclic and then we could show that those are collinear, and then maybe that'll help solve it. So, okay. So draw this circle, and then we wanna show both that this is cyclic and that these are collinear. So showing that this is cyclic should probably just be an angle chase. Um, I would think because So, so we could try to show that BKD is BJD and BKD is EKD minus EKA, which um, EKA is EAB. Yeah, let's say we know this is cyclic, then can we show that these are collinear? That I think also might be an angle chase because 
Well, okay, let, let, let me write this out. I, I think this might work. So let me call this K prime. Oops. Um, all right, so let shrink the diagram a little bit. So draw the circle with center E passing through A and B. and let it intersect uh, AB at K prime. Okay. So, first we're gonna show uh, that FD and K prime are collinear. Um, so we have angle A, D, K prime. Oh, actually, no, for, first we're gonna try to show that this is cyclic. So, we have angle B, K prime, D. is E K prime D minus E K prime B. Sorry. E A F is 90 plus A over two. Are you, are you doing it a different way or you're talking about the way that that I um, okay oh okay uh, I solved it with the uh, root BC inversion oh really okay yeah all right let me uh, all right, I'm gonna hide the stuff I added. So, um, sorry. Basically, the main thing uh, I will prove is that uh, EF uh, DH is cyclic. Okay. And after that, I some angle chase uh, finish it. Okay. So that is the main thing we want to prove. All right. And we will uh, invert at A with radius root AB times AC and angle bisector flip. Okay. So let C D and inversion at A. C followed by a reflection bell line EB. Right? Okay. Uh... B and C swap. D okay. goes to the midpoint of arc BC of circumcircle ABC. Okay. Uh, 
and H goes to the antipode. Okay. Oops. Let's call this something else. H will go to the antipode. Let's call this O. It's going to call everything K now because I, or, or let me just call this K. Whoops. Oops, I want to reflect. Let's call it S. Okay, so H and D go to S and R. Yeah, and basically we wanted to handle points E and F. Okay, okay. Uh, point G firstly inverts to the reflection of A over R. Okay. So uh, I, you should draw in that point. Okay. Yeah. Move things around a little bit. All right. Uh, uh, EGF are collinear. So uh, after the inversion, uh, we will have that A, E prime, F prime, and A prime will be uh, concyclic. Okay. So, okay. So we should, so yeah, E prime. Yeah. So yeah, I'm trying to think how to draw E prime and F prime. But I see what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, it should lie on the circle with diameter A, A prime, actually. The, the E prime and F prime. Okay. Now that I think of it, don't know if that is all obvious. Maybe I missed that. Um, but, but you're saying the circle with diameter A, A prime? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You already have the midpoint. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. So it will be the intersection of S C S and S B and that circle. Okay. So S C and S B. Yeah, since. Uh, Circle, circle ABH inverts to line CS. Okay. And also, I think it is an angle chase. Uh, no, uh, the uh, the other ray. The other one. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Also, it is an angle chase probably to show that uh, SB and SC are tangents of these circles. Okay. Yeah, because that's 90 degrees. So yeah, they're tangent. Um, so these points. Did you think they were E prime and F prime? Or no? Yes, yeah, they should be. But I have to think if it is uh, full obvious or that is uh, the only thing we need like to handle. But this one doesn't look like F prime. Like this one's not collinear with A and F. Um, uh, but you flip over the bisector. It is E prime. Uh, e is E prime. Forgot about that. Okay. Okay. So ABH inverts to ACS. Um, oh, 
Okay, and uh, let's say that we know that these are E prime and F prime for now. Uh, then it is actually very, very simple to prove that, uh, th then we need to prove that E prime S R F prime is uh, cyclic. Okay. But uh, we know that uh, R E prime is equal to R F prime. And also uh, R B is R C. And we also have that uh, we have angle F prime B BR is uh, um, E prime CR. So we have uh, like similar triangles F prime B F prime F prime BR and E prime CR. And after that, uh, we like uh, get the angle. I think. Okay. All right, so it's trying to show, so wait, so circle ABH inverts to um, circle ACS. No, the line CS. Inverts to line CS. Okay, so E prime would have to lie somewhere on that line. Um, and So let's see, R, sorry. Okay, okay. Uh, I know how to prove, uh, now I know how to prove that uh, uh, EF inverts to uh, this big circle at, okay. at center R. Okay, uh, I was not sure before, but now I know. Basically okay. the thing uh, we need is, uh, uh, we need to intersect EF with BC. Okay. Okay, now it is an angle trace uh, to prove that I, IA is uh, a tangent to circumcircle ABC. Okay. And uh, we consider then uh, where I inverts. Uh, so uh, I will invert to a point on the circumcircle of ABC, which is uh, isogonal to like that line AI, and that is uh, precisely the uh, the like uh, point uh, where we have a, a trapezoid uh, ABC and in another point like uh, you take parallel through A to BC and intersect okay. with circle. Okay. This part right here. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we will obviously have that R RA is equal to R and uh, RP. So <laughs> that should be it, right? Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll write this all out. So let, let, EF intersect BC at I. Um, so, so, so basically you said you, you just proved that E inverts to E prime and F inverts to F prime, right? Yeah, that is the key step. Okay, so, so wait, so how did you show, say it one more time. Sorry, I didn't understand it. Um, I inverts to P. Okay. And uh, we have uh, line EF will invert to a circle which passes through A, also through P, and it will pass uh, through uh, the inver inversion of G, but we got that it is uh, A prime. Okay. So, so a circle A, P, A prime is the desired circle, and it is just the circle with center R. Okay. Obvious. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to write this out. 
That's interesting. Okay. So it also follow from the fact that EG is perpendicular to AB. So EG goes to a circle with diameter AA prime. Uh, uh, yeah, probably. Oh, because because AGE has to invert. Um, yeah, so. So it's just from the fact that EF is perpendicular to A. Let's, uh, let me think about this. What con? Yeah, say? yeah, that is, that is good. Uh, you don't need point I. Okay. It is just enough that it is perpendicular. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, the circle ABH goes to, um, so, so I'll write everything out. This, it takes, uh, ABH to, um, to the line. Um, CS. And it takes um, ACH to the line BS. Um, and then you said since EF is perpendicular to A, A prime. Then, since E, F, and G are collinear, that, that would mean E prime, F prime. I'm trying to think about this. Oh, yeah, good to see you again, uh, Anurag. So, so, wait, explain that to me. Because they're perpendicular and G goes to A prime, uh, you, in inversion, you have uh, the thing that, uh, uh, so you take points A and B and the center of inversion O, like any, okay. then angle e, uh, OAB is OB prime A prime. So like the A and B swap under the inversion. And here uh, you can take uh, angle AGE, that is 90. And then okay. that is equal to uh, a uh, a uh, e prime a prime. So e, a e prime a prime is nine. It preserve okay. It preserves angles. Like yeah yeah. But for okay. So okay. So um. Okay, let R midpoint of arc BC of ABC. And let A prime be the reflection of A over R. Um, then phi of g is equal to a prime. So, um, and this, this implies that angle AGE say, which is equal to angle AE prime A prime. Okay. Put 
it's not a separate line. It's on the circle with diameter a prime. Wait, what was wrong with that? Oh. Uh, oh, I just said an extra dollar sign there. Okay. Um, and so uh, I'll just write it like this. U prime is equal to uh, intersection of that with uh, SC. And then once we know that, um, then saying that A, so we want to show AEFK is cyclic. And when we invert them, then we get AE prime F prime. Okay. So I'll say similarly F prime. Okay, so then once we have this, uh, where do we go from there? Um, we prove that uh, E prime F prime RS is uh, cyclic. Um, oh, yeah. That can be done by proving that uh, uh, F prime BR and E prime CR are actually congruent. Okay, because BR is equal to CR, and so they're actually- is E prime R, and uh, we have one angle. Okay, so F prime R equals E prime R. And um, RB equals RC. And then, um, and then this, this angle is equal to that angle. And then, so then we have angle F, F prime BR. Yeah, it's basically, yeah. Or, yeah, so either a spiral similarity or just side angle side. Angle RBS. is equal to uh, E prime CR. All right, so it's like Khan is joining. Oh, sorry, I just typed it. Uh, uh, oh, but that's the final one. Okay. So, and then once we have to reprove uh, that EF DH is uh, cyclic. Right. Um, yeah, so, so this, this means that e, EF, E prime, F prime, D H E prime F prime D H is cyclic, right? Uh, no, uh, we do E prime F prime R S, but then by inversion follows the other one. Okay, so this means E prime F prime R S is cyclic. Um, EF, um, EF DH is cyclic. And 
and Wait, so we know those are congruent and because, wait, so once we know these are congruent, um, then, yeah, then it's kind of easy to show because then this thing, because then angle F prime R E prime is B R C just by kind of rotation. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave that like that. Um, and once we know E F D H is cyclic, um, then we apply A E F. We want to show AEFK is cyclic. Um, is, it, is it just an angle chase then to show AEFK is cyclic? Yeah, yeah, the one I wrote in the chat. Okay, all right. All right. Oh yeah, thanks for writing it in, in law tech. Um, all right. I just remembered that uh, the uh, angle sign didn't work, so. I yeah, <laughs> yeah, good call. Um, the FK is cyclic. And then similarly, uh, AFL, it's cyclic. And that means that AEFKL is cyclic. All right. So, yeah, I'll have to see after the session if the way that I had works, but that's a, it's a nice solution. Uh, good way of using root BC inversion. So, we have six minutes left. Um, let's see, we solved three. Four. We solved four problems. Um, you you said you've already solved this one, right? Yeah. Um, we could look at this a little bit more. I feel like we've solved. Yeah, for the last six minutes, see see where, where we can get with this. Um, but yeah, I, I I feel like I'm I'm eighty percent sure we've done this before on my channel. Um, so not 100%, but it feels familiar. Yeah, so we added a lot to the diagram, but the initial problem for like Khan um, and like anyone who joined later, like, yeah, the initial problem was very simple. Yeah, it's too messy. But yeah, basically, if we can show that M and N are isogonal conjugates in triangle P, H, G, that would solve the problem. Uh, and that's equivalent to showing that G, A, N, H is cyclic. But we still have to use somewhere that M is the midpoint. I feel like that's what's missing. We kind of used it while proving like when M and N were isogonal in G, P, H. But we yeah. kind of what? Like we used it in proving like M and N are isogonal in GPH. Yeah, so we use that. We use that in showing that they're isogonal in this angle. Um, so yeah, that 
we used it somewhere. Um, but the thing is, like, let's, I think we also have to use it in showing their isogonal in, in this angle because other, otherwise, um, like if we could prove that these are isogonal without using that M as the midpoint, then we could use the same argument to show that these are isogonal without needing that M as the midpoint, right? So yeah, I, I think we also need to use it here basically. Uh, yeah, like I get you. Like you're trying to say, like if we like if this is a general fact and doesn't depend on n, then we could show it to the other side, and then it actually doesn't like need. And exactly. Then, yeah. Exactly. So yeah. All right, I'll just one more minute and then I think I will stop. Yeah, this will be a fun one to look more into after the session. It's going to take me a while to, to find it on my channel, but uh, I'll find it eventually. <laughs> Uh, okay, Russian. All right, so I'll check out Russia. All right, so I think I'm going to stop here. Um, so we had a good number of people today. So for everyone who participated, thanks a lot. Um, thanks for yeah, making this channel as, uh, as fun as it is. And for everyone watching on YouTube, uh, thanks for watching. So if you want to join us um, in a future session, feel free to email me at mgreenb one at gmail.com. Uh, it's in the description of my video. And we meet every Sunday at 8 a.m. U.S. Central Time. So thanks again and have a great day.